Hey everybody, I'm Shane Old Mixon. I'm the sales leader at This Way Global. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to talk about how to create great job descriptions to attract better talent. And with me today, I've got Angela Hood, our founder and CEO. Thanks for joining us, Angela. Angela comes from a background of engineering, uh, specifically construction engineering, where there are not many females. So she's been up against um, bias and this drives everything that we do here at This Way Global. And I'll let her talk a little bit more about her background and what's brought her to this point today uh, and why it's important to learn from her experience. Um, so thanks for joining us, Angela. Oh, thanks. Uh, and I appreciate the invitation. Um, I, one of the things that I want us to cover is a little bit about why we as a team spend so much time working on this. Uh, so it's not just me. I think uh, that's one thing that we should really point out. We have a huge team, all focused on removing bias and hiring. And a lot of us, uh, if not all of us, have suffered some kind of bias, different types. Um, but mine definitely comes from being in the construction industry at the start of my career. And uh, instead of using my name, which is Angela Hood, I would use A.L. Hood at the top of my resume because then that way people would think either uh, my name was Al or I was definitely a guy, but you know, certainly not someone named Angela. Um, and I, you know, that was just what I did. I would get the interview and then I would get the job. It would work out okay. And then once I got on the job, generally the guys were really accepting, but um, it was hard to get through that initial screening process because the recruiters were like, I don't think a woman wants to go out on this job site. And actually I really love job sites, mm -hmm. oddly enough. And we do call her Al, so, so, <laughs> just so everybody knows. No, they don't. <laughs> so just a quick agenda for the call. We're really going to dive in on what jargon and cliches to avoid to help attract better talent. And then also, you know, gender bias specifically. So just how to avoid some of the subtleties that you might not even know you're using. And then lastly, ultimately, you want to know how to increase application volume. So we're going to wrap it up with that point. Uh, and then we'll end with a survey so you can give us a little bit of feedback on how we did and what you got out of this. And I think too, uh, the team's gonna be available to answer questions at the end if I remember correctly, so. Um, yep, if you have questions yeah. as we're running through this, feel free to send them through the chat and we'll be responding in real time. Awesome, um, so I'm going to go off script because something happened this weekend that I think is really pertinent. I know that Dow production team is really afraid. What are just you doing right, right now? Okay, so here's the deal. We went to a restaurant. It was a very nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I read the description of the menu item. Mm -hmm. And I read what it wrote underneath. It was like three or four lines underneath. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I want. And I ordered it. And the waiter said, oh yeah, you don't want that. I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, no, I, I've just read it. It's exactly what I want. He goes, yeah, that's not actually what's going to come out, though. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, why is that on the menu? And then it dawned on me, that's exactly what we're talking about with job descriptions. It's like, why are you describing something that is not in reality what you need? Like, it's not what the job is. It's not who you're looking for. And fortunately, the waiter was nice enough to stop me. But I would, I was imagining like how frustrated I would have been because it was kind of an expensive restaurant. I'm like, mm -hmm. I would have been really irritated had I was thinking that's what was going to show up and something completely different showed up. And I really think that that's what we're trying to solve in the job description thing. So I know it's a, you know, it's a diversion a bit, but it was really just made me think that very relevant to our conversation today. So did you help them write down the proper way to talk about that dish? <laughs> I, did or? Not. Okay. I said I'm going to do a webinar. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with some of the don'ts first, specifically around jargon, cliches, and buzzwords. So Angela, talk about some of the examples that you've seen oh my and, gosh. and why it's important to avoid these. Yeah, so like uh, recently I gave a talk and someone called me in the in the description of me being a speaker, they called me a guru. I was like, oh, you did not just do that because I hate this so much. Um, so I think what happens a lot in sales roles is what we see is the ninja. Mm. The ninja closer or something like that, right? Yeah. Now, you might look great in a ninja outfit. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I, I have seen you in a Buzz Lightyear. That was... That was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that... Um, I don't think that you really ever think of yourself as a ninja. 
I don't think you think of yourself as guru or anything. No. And I'm not sure that the right people that are really going to be part of a cohesive team think of themselves like that. The worst part is it excludes most women. Like women, mm -hmm. when they read that, or even uh, people that like to work with women, they just read that and like, this is not the type of culture that I want to work in. Um, I think it says some not great things about your company. Just, it, it, it makes a lot of people not want to apply for the job. And what we really want is we want our teams to look like our customers. Mm -hmm. And most companies have a really wide range of customers. So you want a really wide range of very diverse team. I just think this is a really important one to leave these weird terms out. Yeah, so try to avoid these, you know, give your give your job descriptions and a once over and you know, see if you're using any buzzwords or cliche terms like this and our recommendation is that you you go ahead and, you know, substitute something a little bit more appropriate in in place of those. You also want to avoid using va uh, vague language like competitive salary, culture fit, business acumen, right? Uh, that leaves a lot up to interpretation and sometimes a prospect can get lost in, well, do I, am I part of the culture fit? Let me see, like, I don't really understand exactly what the culture is. So it's more about being descriptive and, and direct about what is your culture Right and and yeah. what type of people are you trying to attract? So. So I think with our company, some of the key ones I would say we move fast. Right. Uh, we value transparency, dog friendly things mm -hmm. like that. You know, those are all part of how we operate as a company. Um, but we also like from a competitive salary perspective. You know, we're a startup, and so I think sometimes that is one of our challenges when we're hiring people. Whereas some of the enterprise customers we have, that's not a challenge for them. They're paying some of the top salaries available in the market. But instead of saying we highly value the people that work for us, they say competitive salary. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's the part that we need to put, like why are you competitive? Mm -hmm. You're competitive because you want to be, because you value them and you want to make them a, a lasting part of your team. It sounds to me much more engaging than just competitive salary. Kind of what about business acumen? Do you like it? Uh, I'm not a big fan of business no. acumen. Why yeah, not? I just think that that's um, you know it's one of those buzzwords that's changed over the years, right? Mm -hmm. And it's something that you know millennials are the majority of the workforce today, and business acumen was is not something that necessarily appeals to them when they hear that. Yeah, it sounds kind of stiff. Yeah, you know, it sounds um, it sounds like a a cubicle with a suit and tie. Old enterprise. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So even though our enterprise clients, you know, they need people with business acumen, yeah. uh, they also need to think about how that reads for so candidates. So maybe like strategic mindset or something like yeah. that so it sounds a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. So 36% of candidates agree that they are clear job descriptions when they read them. That is tragically low, but I think that a little bit like my menu experience, uh, come to t come to pass that apparently this restaurant has this problem on a lot of their menu items, because the the, the uh, waiter said, oh yeah, a lot of our menu items are like that. I thought this is crazy. Someone needs to rewrite your entire menu, and I think uh, that's the case with a lot of these uh, companies that we talk to that they really need to invest some time to go back and not do copy paste from an old job description mm -hmm. so that they can have more accurate ones. I find it interesting that the hiring managers say that they're providing clear job descriptions. So I think maybe there's a translation problem from the hiring manager possibly to the recruiter and the copy paste thing is not being translated completely because if the candidates don't agree, it means that they're finding out something in the interview process that contradicts what the job description says. So it's pretty obvious that, yeah, you need to spend some time kind of revamping these job descriptions, but what do you say to somebody, a recruiter that says, well, Angela, I've got 25 open jobs right now and I've got thousands yeah. of candidates pouring in. I don't, I, you know, I need to do that. Yeah. I don't really have the time right now yeah. to, to do the job description. Yeah, and I mean, this is one of the things when we created uh, Reveal, one of our products, we said, okay, if we could make 
the recruiter be able to use their time in the w places where only a person can do something or the person is best suited to do something. And I think writing a, a job description is one of those places. That and talking to the candidates then we will be able to give them the ability to do the really important parts of the job. And we do the calculation part, which is the ranking and scoring of the applicants to the job. So that's one of the ways that our technology has been really beneficial. I think though, if the company is not asking for what they need in that person and not being transparent about what the job is, it's gonna be really hard for any technology to match effectively because mm -hmm. we're matching the uh, applicants to a, a role that really isn't honest. Mm -hmm. It's not really transparent. Right. Uh, we're gonna switch gears and talk about a do. So a uh, best practice here and it kind of oh, piggybacks yeah. okay, off yeah. what you just said. Be transparent and clear about the role. Yeah. So can you talk about some examples? Yeah, so I think that one of the things I've learned, is, and it was actually hard for us when we really were coming out with our own job descriptions, was to say, okay, look, we, we're downtown Austin, and traffic is atrocious. Uh, we fortunately have parking, so yeah. we can, you know, we can uh, make that advantage for our employees. But it was really hard for us to be transparent about the things that were going to be a struggle. We have a lot of construction around us all the time, so that can be noisy. Uh, we... We just have those things, and we were just very clear about the role to everyone that applies. But I think the other part of it is the candidates see that this company is being honest, and so they feel like, okay, that's how the company's run. Mm -hmm. So if I if we start off on an honest footing on the job description, it's kind of like having a great first date. Where you're like, this was a real first date. I had a real conversation. And then you can kind of take it on in a little bit more serious role once you start talking and uh, I think it makes the um, recruiting process go more efficiently, and I think you fill your seats faster by just being transparent. Because you're, you're going to have uh, people that are truly interested in the real job that you're trying to fill at your company. Yeah, I can say from experience when I was applying here, I appreciated that it was very uh, blunt, for lack of yeah. a better way to put it. You know, I understood what it was going to look and feel like when I walked into the door here on my first day. And then kind of what the what the atmosphere and the the culture were going to be throughout my time. So that was very important, yeah. and it was a it was a relief because I've applied to jobs before, I've taken those jobs before, and the culture was not what it was described. Mm -hmm. The job description right. did not fit what I was actually doing in the seat. So yeah. very important to be transparent and clear about the role. And you want to create a sense of urgency too, right? There's a unique challenge that your company is is tackling right now and it's going to change right businesses are not doing the same thing that they were doing five years ago right you have to adapt and evolve so definitely add that sense of urgency in the application get people excited uh, and, and ready to submit as soon as they lay eyes on that job so isn't this one of the questions we're asking our webinar attendees right which one of these phrases they find more appealing at our company, we have the proven ability to achieve spectacular results. Or working here, you will move mountains. All right, so I definitely have which one I would like to see. Um, I think we should have everyone kind of weigh in. Give us your opinion. We'll give it a couple of minutes. Um, so while we're waiting for everyone to do that, do you think that companies, I guess, set the expectation correct for how uh, hard or how complex the job will be? Um, I think they either, most of them don't do a good job of that. Okay. Or they they try to oversell it. You oh, know? right, all right. Um, like, you know, in this role, you need to be the best at everything that you've never done before, <laughs> plus what you've done before. And it's oh, like, right. Okay, that sounds pretty the unicorn, challenging. Unicorn yeah. role. It's Got like, it. okay, when I read that, I'm not going to see my family, my friends. Okay. I'm not going to take vacation, you know? So that turns people off. The unicorn role. Right. Yeah, yeah, so avoid that. Um, oh, looks like we've got some questions coming okay. in. Okay, all right. Good. Some feedback. Awesome. So our team is going to be responding, like we said in the beginning, to your to your questions and your thoughts on this. Thanks for submitting that. Don't skip the cultural benefits of the job, right? PTO that's flexible, work from home, dog-friendly offices, 
these are all very important to, again, the millennial generation, uh, which is primarily who you need to attract at this point. So highlight those things. Don't bury them. Free snacks, and apparently at our office, you can also get some really bitter coffee. I learned that this morning. That's like, that's also free. <laughs> It's the inside track. Okay, so uh, yeah, super dog-friendly office um, that we have. I think it really has been able to help us attract uh, talent that we wouldn't have been able to attract otherwise. Also, it's a little bit like uh, in-office therapy. I think they mm. all like kind of come and hang out with you at times when you may be a little bit stressed. Yeah. Uh, free stacks, I don't think we can ever have enough. I know that we've learned having parking downtown was a huge benefit. And I think that uh, one thing that enterprise companies do not go into enough are things like the benefits they offer. So many of them have really great health benefits. They have mm -hmm. great dental, eye care, all those types of things. And they'll just put down at the bottom health benefits. Right. Like be more specific. Like say you either have great benefits or you have the ability to create a benefits package that suits your family. Mm -hmm. uh, but do not drone on and on and on about it either because people really want shorter job descriptions that get to the point. Yep. So current employees input about the current job description has helped us a great deal. So we sat down in particular with some of our engineering roles. Uh, we sit down with other engineers and we said, what are you seeing as the gap that we have? And when they surfaced that gap, it didn't match the job description that they had given us maybe two or three weeks earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this was, but we sat down with them and we said, okay, let's discuss this. And They'd fallen into the trap of saying, well, we want to try to describe something that um, we know exists because it's um, software developers have a certain structure to their past experience. I was like, no, let's just ask for what we want. <laughs> and we ended up getting amazing people coming in for the role. Now, we didn't get as many, you know, so we had, I think, about 150 where normally we would have had three or 400. Mm -hmm. But um, for us, it was great. Um, we use our own system, so we use Reveal. And we had Reveal score and rank them. And so within a couple of days, we were in interviews and were able to find a wonderful engineer that joined the team. Um, he's amazing. So I think, again, it just re-emphasizes that we need to be more collaborative mm -hmm. and say, what do we want? What does the company need? What is the gap that needs to be filled? And just say that in the job description. Yeah, I agree. And if you're having trouble filling a certain role, go talk to that team that's already employed with the company and ask them, you know, to review it and say, hey, does this sound like what the actual job is? I think nine times out of 10, they're going to say, no, it's, it's not quite the same. And they'll help you give you the feedback because they want their team to be stronger. You're hiring for their team. So definitely leverage the employees that you have for this. Don't use subjective language. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite one? Oh gosh, um, it's top notch. Top I think that, notch. That's gotta be my, that's my <laughs> least favorite, probably. <laughs> so we all want to be world class. We all want to be best of the best. I mean, I think that's almost like okay, let's just understand that that the people are trying to be that, the company's trying to be that. Mm -hmm. Now it comes down to let's be real with each other and let's say like we want to take our company to the next step or you know we want to expand into a new market or whatever something that's tangible mm -hmm. that people can wrap their brain around and I think too what, what does world-class even mean I don't I don't know I don't know yeah that's the thing when I read that I'm like I don't know if I'm world-class because I don't know what that means so I'm not gonna apply right. that's yeah. the thought process right. so just best practice is leave it out and it really affects uh, women and then people who in general have been overlooked uh, that are absolutely fully qualified for jobs because they think okay this is the mentality of I've been overlooked repeatedly over and over so if I were world-class or best of, of best that wouldn't have happened before and so they end up not applying mm -hmm. when they're fully qualified it's just I don't know it's it's kind of tragic because we see that um, our technology reveals people that have been overlooked. And we see that about 38% of the people that have applied for jobs at companies were fully qualified and they literally were not looked at 
for the job. And mm -hmm. it could be all kinds of biases. It could be because there's just so many applicants that the recruiters have just not had enough time to go through everyone, so they end up missing people fully qualified. Yeah, and, and when you read these, read these out loud, best of the best, top notch, they're very aggressive. Yeah, that's true. Know, so they're gonna turn certain groups off, and those are the types of groups that you're trying to attract right now, so do yourself a favor and, and uh, avoid some of those subjective languages. That's a good segue into diversity, yep. isn't it? Yep, yep. So yeah, the, the terms that we use, I think a lot of this comes from copy-paste, right? So the job description has been around for 10 years, five years, even just maybe two or three years. And there were certain words in there that were, oh, let's be competitive. Well, of course, everyone wants to be competitive. We're in business. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that it's just not a good use of the word inside a job description. Um, outspoken kind of makes me think I don't really want to work at a company that they're just hiring all outspoken people. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that will bring absolutely the highest quality ideas and problem solving are introverts. They're not mm -hmm. outspoken at all. They just, you know, they don't say anything. They say one succinct sentence and everyone's like, yes, that's the thing we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that using these masculine words are really going to keep um, some people that you want inside your organization. And I think these are great examples like collaborative, uh, cooperative. I um, So pa compassionate, mm -hmm. I think this is a very funny word to use in work. I don't know that compassionate is a, is a thing that... Uh, work and compassion go together. Maybe empathy is okay, but empathy is a mm -hmm. neutral word, not a feminine word. Um, and so in the analysis of job descriptions, they came up with the word collaborative is a feminine word. I don't like that. I don't agree with no, that. No, I know. But this is how, uh, this is how it was perceived. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of the things we have to look at. We have to look at data and say, we may not agree personally with it, but if the data says that, then we need to be paying attention to it and make some thoughtful decisions around yeah, it. Agreed. Male biased phrasing versus neutral phrasing. Obviously, it's important to analyze these things, but I think we all know when we see it. So assertive, candidate, strong. Uh, I really dislike the word, I dislike that the word strong has a male correlation mm -hmm. that annoys me because mm -hmm. I you know I think women can be just as strong. Stronger, in <laughs> my experience. <laughs> well, you're married, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I work for you. <laughs> right. So I think that it's one of these things that again, it there is a bias that's in the marketplace that still exists. Don't necessarily agree with it, but that's the reality. And I think mm -hmm. that we need to be generating job descriptions that acknowledge it. And the female bias side where we're <laughs> all, <Pleasantly> assist. <laughs> <laughs> nurturing, you feel nurtured. Oh my gosh. So it's just funny how these are considered female terms. I don't think they really honestly belong in job descriptions unless nurturing is literally like a nursing role where you're supposed to be nurturing someone. Mm -hmm. Specifically, that's the job. And then it should not be uh, male or female biased. It should be about the role, not mm -hmm. about we're trying to attract women or men. I, I love the fact that providing great customer service, be professional, be courteous, those are all things that it doesn't matter if you're male or female, those are things you should be doing if you're in that role. Excellent examples. Right. All right, poll question. How would you rate your company's job descriptions? Be honest. We'll give you a couple minutes here. So masterful works of art. So I can't wait to meet the company that picks A mm. because we are in the business and I would not say we are A. No. I would say that we're, we are trying to achieve A, but we're not there. I think, um, I think if you have that A mindset, then you're totally missing the boat because yeah. this is evolving. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The job description that I read for sales when I came in, it was good for that time. Right. But now I'm actually writing the do the job description <laughs> for sales for our next hire. Right. Because it's changed and yeah. we're we're growing and you know the the market is changing so you know it's um, you know B is really where you yep. want to be so. 
And I think we have a lot of D's apparently based off of the um, what we're seeing the results coming through. Uh, we're seeing lots of D's, which is <laughs> not it's not surprising. I actually think it's great because that's real honesty, mm -hmm. and, and that means the second you can admit that you have a problem, you can start making improvements and, and really see the results. All right, so targeted for the best candidates. I think this one is, okay, the term best candidate, I think we need to be really clear about this. So best candidate is for that company on that team at that moment in time. I think you mm -hmm. had a really good point that maybe who we needed um, as part of our sales team a year ago is different than today and mm -hmm. will be different in a year. Yeah. And so about being able to be agile and evolve those job descriptions to meet really what you need. And with the with Moore's Law, it, it causes um, our companies to change because technology is changing our company so quickly. Yeah. And not just our company, I think every company that we have is a customer. And so this is a really important part is to say, are they effective so it's going to attract who we need are they engaging it means they're going to read the entire job description and, and say okay yes I'm gonna take the time to apply and then are they inclusive meaning they're reaching out to men and women to across all um, ethnicities are uh, if you are an inclusive environment at your company I think you should say we value uh, diversity and inclusion in our company So we want to thank you all for attending, for watching. We're going to send out a survey. Just want to get a little bit of feedback. Did you find this valuable? Um, you know, where could we improve? Do you have any follow-up items that you'd like us to reach out about? So we'll send that over to you shortly. Uh, and then if you have any other questions, we're going to hang on here for about five or 10 minutes. So keep submitting those. If you need to look back through the slides, we're going to submit that for you as well. And I think too, like I had the team add my uh, personal uh, social media contact on here and the reason why is because when I give talks um, at different events uh, what happens generally is afterwards people will come up to me and say like I have really been struggling with that topic and thank you for helping me but like, can you help me on this one point and I do want you to feel uh, comfortable reaching out to me on these venues um, I don't check Twitter every day so I'm um, Probably the best one is to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage you to make it a public um, public notification to me rather than making it private. The reason why is your challenge that you have is probably a challenge that a lot of other people are having. And if you can phrase it a way where it's not maybe disclosing anything that's gonna hurt the company, but just be a little bit more transparent and real, I think that not only will you be helping other people, but you'll also be giving uh, others that are like the other professionals um, a way to reach out to you and you can actually kind of be a leader as far as like, let's all sort this out together. Mm -hmm. um, and then also you can reach out to our AI for Jobs and This Way Global channels. Yeah, and a, a good example would be you know, Angela, I need a little bit of help with neutral phrasing. Yeah. And after listening yeah. to this, I was looking back over our job descriptions, uh, and and they look to be very, um, you know, very male focused. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Which so many of them are. Uh, so because you're having that challenge, uh, we definitely want you to share it publicly because your peers at other companies and yeah. even at your company are probably having the same challenges. Yep. And we're Absolutely. here to help everybody. Yeah. And if we can help you out by showing you our technology, we'd love to do that too. The team is always available to demonstrate it to you. It's it's very good because you don't have to wonder whether it works or not. We can just show you. Mm -hmm. So look forward to hearing from you. Um, thanks for joining us. Thank you.